So Erica, thank you very much for joining us. We've just heard a very exciting chapter from the Midnight Carnival. What happens next in the story? Um, well, the girls spend a lot of time in the carnival and they end up making friends with some of the performers. Um, and, but the carnival hides a very dark secret and they end up caught up in this plot that they don't really understand and they start keeping secrets from each other and the group splinters apart. Um, which all works in the ringmaster's favour because it turns out he has had a, a plan for them from the very beginning. And um, why did you set the book uh, in a carnival with circus performers and clowns? Well, I think it's the scope of it, really. I've always loved the idea of a circus or a carnival placed for a story because you've got all these weird characters, particularly the old style carnivals where um, I suppose it's terrible to so, see, so, you know, people who were unusual were thought of as, you know, something to be displayed. And this book, they have talents that are used, but um, they're all also unusual in their look. So, um, so they all stand out, they're all very individual. And because I've, they're a, a carnival that comes from the Southern States, and they've got a mix of people in there from Eastern Europe, from, from Russia, from Germany as well. Um, so it just gives you a lot of scope for individual characters, really interesting characters. And there's also something just a little bit spooky about carnivals. There's something, there's just that element of creepy that is wonderful to play with, so. I mean, clowns traditionally are supposed to be sources of entertainment and amusement, mm -hmm. but yet so many people find them creepy or disturbing. That's me too. <laughs> they really creep me out and I definitely wanted to have some sort of kind of creepy troop of clowns in there. Um, I, think it's the, I think it's the painted faces. I've a, the, the chapter I read out is called Painted Faces and I think it's that hiding behind a thick layer of makeup, hiding behind a mask and this facade of a big smile when in fact you've no idea whether there's a big smile going on inside. So I think there's that it's the fact that the clowns could be hiding something that makes them really creepy. So I wanted a troop of clowns that were silent. There's something really eerie about them not communicating vocally. And um, I wanted them to be kind of old, in old and tattered silk suits. Um, and just to be not something that you would communicate with, not something that the girls interact with, but something that just creeps around the corners and it's just really eerie. So yeah. When you're writing a book like The Midnight Carnival, this is your fifth Yes, fifth, fifth book in the series. Book. Yeah. What, what is the process about getting an idea from your head or thinking this would be good for, for a story to actually getting a, a plot line worked out and your, your characters uh, involved? Um, well, it kind of, I suppose you get this, the idea of a placement maybe or of a feel or an atmosphere. So the carnival was an idea in itself. Um, in the first book, it was um, the discovery of magic as something real when they were playing they were trying to make something come true and it, it actually coming true um, so you start off with kind of a small idea and then I suppose your you want your characters to learn something and you want them to develop um, and also you want some sort of um, friction between the friends they were a really close group of friends and I love that about the characters but there always has to be something that um, causes a little bit of a divide between them that they have to reconcile. So things that they don't understand about each other, things that somebody does that seem odd to the others. And there has to be some sort of division at some point. And then they realize they overcome the difference and they, they, they understand the difference and they come to, and it actually makes them stronger. As they come through the, through the books, I think the group has become really, really very, very strong friendship you know, uh, between them. So I think that, that helps in the fact that they're constantly being driven apart and then brought back together. Well, I mean, is that idea of you know, finding a, sort of a problem or an issue, is that something you would you recommend to younger writers uh, when I they're think, trying to form you know, their own story? Definitely. I think when, you're, when you start out with a story, you want to have a challenge. There always has to be a challenge, something that your main character or your main characters have to overcome. So when I'm plotting out a story, normally what I would do is I would I, I try and draw a time line and I have the kind of major events and I go through you know kind of I call them the big stepping stones this is a timeline is something I use for for when I'm having bad days of writing where nothing will come out if I have a timeline written I can just get to the next stepping stone it's like a you know it helps me move on so I would have these big stepping stones which would be the major plot lines and the major plot line would be the big challenge it would be something for your characters to overcome something that's difficult for them or something that terrifies them um, and then in between I would have little stepping stones which may be subplots that might be somebody getting over something smaller or somebody challenging themselves in a smaller way. So yeah, having a challenge in the story is, is the main thing. You want something for your character to, something to make your character grow. So something they have to come, you know, get over. Now your, your main character Grace features in, in all of your books. Mm -hmm. Where did Grace come from? She's me. She's me. It's all, all the, the girls are kind of loosely based on me and my friends when we were in school. And um, it's kind of why I started writing the books, in fact, because I only started writing when I was about 28. 
Um, I hadn't written as an adult before that. And um, I really wanted to write about this time in school um, when I had this really great group of friends and we're all still really close now. And I just remember it being a really fun time in school. And in fact, we were aspiring witches as well. We were useless at it and we never got anywhere. But um, I just remember it being a really fun time in school because we were all really different. We, you wouldn't have put us together, but we, had, we all had this interest in supernatural and that sort of thing. And it brought us together. And um, I just remember it being a really, really fun time in school. So I really wanted to write about that, that connection and that, that kind of sets you up for your friends in life. You know what I mean? Um, so, so that's how they came about. So each of them is loosely based, and I sometimes get in trouble for, you know, if a friend picks herself out of the story and doesn't like, you know, <laughs> one of the characters. I had that once, um, but I can firmly say Grace is based on me. So I was the kind of bookwormy, um, you know, very well behaved, always did my homework type of person. So she's she's very much based on me, which makes her really easy to write. <laughs> so the Midnight Carnival uh, is published when. It's out this autumn, either, I think the end of September, beginning of October, in time for Halloween. Um, and yeah, so it'll, it'll be out then in the shops by then. Definitely one to look out for. Erica, thank you very much thank for joining Thank you very us. much.